disaster couldn't get any worse. Some reports are indicating that as much as one million times the normal level of methane gas has been found in several regions near the oil spill. Now, oceanographer John Kessler just got back from a 10-day research expedition near the BP oil spill, and he joins me today from Texas to talk about what he and his team found over there and how it could affect the future of the region. Hi there, Dr. Kessler. So you just got back and said that gas levels are astonishingly high. So when you have high concentrations of methane, what could that mean you know, for the air, for the marine life, for the population that lives in that area? Well, that's exactly what we're trying to find out right now. Um, these are higher levels than we've ever seen at any other location in the ocean itself. Uh, in terms of the air, most of these really high concentrations that we've seen are actually in the deep waters. They're not in the surface waters. So most of it's staying trapped down in the deep ocean. But what does that mean then in terms of the marine life? Um, well. Certainly, my expertise are more in line with the chemical side of things, not so much with the biology side of things. But what I can comment on is that methane itself can be a source of food for various microorganisms. And as those organisms eat this methane gas, just like you and I, when we consume food, we consume oxygen. So with all of this incredibly large quantity of, of methane then in these deep waters, what we're concerned about, what we're trying to analyze, is how much of a drawdown in the dissolved oxygen will this bring? And then uh, will it ever lead, reach some critical levels uh, for the, the marine life that lives in those regions? Now, scientists also think that measuring methane could actually give a more accurate picture of the extent of the oil spill. Can you just elaborate a little bit more on that? Of course. Uh, oil itself is an incredibly complex mixture of thousands of different, very complex organic molecules. Methane itself is the simplest organic molecule. And it, since it makes up such an incredibly large component of this spill, what this means then uh, is that we can under, we know the properties of methane very, very well. We know its biological, chemical, physical properties. Uh, whereas all of these other very complex molecules, we don't know those as well, but we can study methane. We know where it's going. We can study at what rate it's going from one place to the next. Use that really to quantify the size of the spill. And if we know what fraction of the spill then is methane itself, we can use our analyses of, of methane to scale up to the entire size. Now, you also said that oxygen depletions haven't reached a critical level yet, but, you know, the oil is still spilling into the Gulf. So, so what is the future going to hold here? Uh, again, we, we're not 100 percent sure, but certainly uh, our preliminary analyses indicate that, yes, there are oxygen drawdowns. What we're trying to figure out now is, uh, number one, what specific chemical components are causing that drawdown? Is it the methane, which is at such incredibly high levels, or is it one of the other more complex uh, hydrocarbons that are a part of the oil? Uh, as well as, um, what about the rates at which it's consuming it? Is it consuming it, uh, are these microorganisms consuming methane, consuming oxygen at a very slow rate, meaning that we could have a much more chronic influence here where we'll see critical drawdowns of oxygen, say, in the coming months, possibly in the coming years, or is it just simply not doing anything at all and we're not going to see any drawdowns whatsoever These are the uh, of oxygen? These are the types of questions that we're hoping to address right now with our research as well as uh, with hopefully some future research programs. Now, Dr. Kessler, uh, hurricane season is coming up and you have this oil still uh, coming up to shore. Now, people are afraid that not only are they going to be evacuated for a short amount of time, but that perhaps they'll never be able to come back to where they are. Is that right? I think that's certainly uh, we can classify that in the realm of possibilities, but not really in the realm of probabilities. This is I think what people are talking about here are, are more doomsday type scenarios uh, of hurricanes and oil spills and natural gas all really coming together. But I think we really look at this with a level head, with, with the data that we have in hand, that that's most likely not what's going to happen. Uh, certainly, our understanding of the spill is still in its infancy, and we need to do many, many more studies in order to be able to have a very, very solid understanding of everything. But our understanding of oil and natural gas 
uh, from previous spills from various natural systems indicates that any sort of, uh, say, evacuation uh, would most likely be uh, much more temporary. Now, you just got back uh, from that area. Of course, what is the mood there? Are the folks there angry, upset? You know, the, the people that are most affected by this oil spill, what are they saying? Well, um, to be quite honest, uh, the people on the front lines that, that, that have houses, that have uh, businesses, uh, fisheries industries, I didn't really get an opportunity to talk to those people too much. Uh, we were really on our research expedition out in the Gulf very isolated from that aspect of the spill. What I can comment on is the level of effort that's going on to contain and to cap and to really shut off this spill. The mood out around Ground Zero is one where people are working very, very hard. Uh, there's a, a very strong coordination of all of the, the different types of, of, of containment and capping equipment. Uh, it's the best way that I can describe it is a well orchestrated ballet dance of skyscrapers. That's the level of commitment that's going on out there in the Gulf of people working around the clock to try to contain and cap it. That's the closest that we came to kind of seeing the mood of the spill. And, and I was uh, rather impressed by the magnitude of everything and also how hard everyone was working. Very interesting analogy there. Uh, Dr. John Kessler, professor of oceanography at Texas and A&M uh, University. Very good to have your analysis today. Thanks so much.